such a good car. Hello, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're out in the MR2 again, and I bought this car at the beginning of November. I think it was the beginning of November, uh, 2022. So now, today, 1st of April, we're knocking on the door of six months ownership. So being six months in, and with the car pretty much being finished now, I thought it'd be a good idea to do like a buyer's guide for anybody considering buying an MR2, like what to look for, all the problems that you're gonna encounter, of which I pr pretty much encountered all of them. But this car looked like a good idea. I mean, full history, late car, uh, right color, right spec. Uh, but unfortunately, like a lot of owners, we're finding that these cars are getting to the point they're starting to rust away. And the rust is in places that you're not gonna actually see, probably, when you go to have a look at the cars. You've got to go a bit deeper. A lot of the rust is gonna be hidden away in chassis rails, which are covered in plastic panels and things. And you're really gonna to have to ask the owner's permission to start to remove things in order to clarify if those problem areas are affected or not. So how do I feel about the car six months into ownership? Well, I still like it. It's a cracking little car. It, it drives like a go-kart. Fantastic steering. I hate to say it, it probably is more fun in the Benz than the GT86, as long as you've got traction. If you get the back end out on this thing, I'm pretty sure it will not be as fun as the GT86 very quickly. But six months in, and having spent a considerable amount of money on this car, probably a lot more than it's ever gonna be worth. Was it worth it? Uh, maybe not. I mean, for the next owner, they'd be biting my hand off to buy this car because I've spent so much time and effort and money on this thing. It's as close, really, as you're gonna to get to a brand new car, in my opinion. But money and little problems aside, would I recommend one of these cars to somebody else? Oh yeah, totally. It's an absolute hoot to drive. So speaking from my six months of ownership and my experience of these things, what would I recommend to anybody considering buying an MR2 Roadster? Well, first and foremost, try to get yourself a late facelift car with a full service history and low mileage and go over it with a fine tooth comb. If there's any rust, then just assume that it's like the tip of the iceberg and behind that, is even worse rust. So I unfortunately, I wasn't that lucky with this car, but I don't regret it, it was still a good buy. But when I got it home and I started to strip it down to do the rust, I found the rust was a lot worse than what I'd previously thought it was. And it's taken a lot of time and money and heartache to get that all done. And the problem is because I had the plans to get this car home, start modifying it, do the engine swap, because I had to spend six months of just replacing worn out suspension and brakes and cutting out rust and oh, getting stuff painted, it's just put everything back. I've just lost lots and lots of time and lots and lots of money in the process. So my advice to you, try to get yourself a low mileage car, facelift, full service history, and go over it with a fine tooth comb if you can. Check the front suspension turrets. Check in the engine bay. Those are the places these cars love to rust. And the other thing, by getting yourself a facelift car, you're not gonna have any of those oil starvation and oil burning issues and catalytic converter issues that the earlier MR2s are really badly known for. Another thing is when you get a facelift car, you're gonna get a six speed box. All the earlier pre-facelift cars, five speed. Something to keep in mind. It's all about modifying them. Well, if you're gonna be buying a standard car, my advice to you would be leave it standard. Over time, it's the standard unmolested cars which are gonna be the ones that are gonna be worth considerable value in the future. When all of the cheap ones are rusted away and you're only left with the cream of the crop. Modifying cars, as fun as it is, is going to probably devalue these cars. I mean, this thing, pretty stock, however, the exhaust system on this totally rusted through and getting new exhaust systems they either don't exist genuine Toyota ones or they are crazy money 
But there are lots of alternatives. I mean, like I put a full Malian uh, exhaust system on this with a sports cat. Fantastic, and it sounds really awesome. And it's a lot lighter than stock, something to consider. 20 kilos I've saved out of this car by setting that exhaust system on the car. Brakes. The standard brakes aren't terrible, but big gains can be had by upgrading them. Um, I've gone for M-Tech discs with yellow stuff pads, and while I was in there, I replaced every little metal clip, shim, rubber boot, everything on the actual calipers so that they were functioning nice and freely. Tires, got some fantastic Yokohama Advan 8008 RS tires, and we fitted some new shiny fog lights, we've polished up the headlights, we've gave the interior a bloody good clean, and everything works on this car. Like, even the electric aerial, everything that works, which is which is rare on these cars, because they get on, on a bit now. And especially this thing, this thing's gone just over 100,000 miles, but it has a full service history. It has tons of receipts, loads of history. You wanna make sure the car's been looked after, Chances are, if, you, if you're looking at a car that has got a patchy service history or doesn't have receipts for all of the things it's had over its lifetime, it's probably a good indication that it hasn't been very well looked after. So what else can I tell you about these cars? Well, they did an automatic gearbox, not really an automatic, it's called the SMT. You might have heard about it if you've been researching them. Um, essentially all they did is they took the manual box and they automated the shifting mechanism and the clutch mechanism. So it's actually the same gearbox, pretty much. Um, so you get a five speed on the earlier cars, you get a six speed on the later cars, but generally the consensus is they're not very good. I mean, it was very early technology. It's not like the later automated manuals that newer Toyotas like the iGo get. It's uh, a very old fashioned version of it and they weren't very reliable. So best to steer away from those. And then there are lots of colors available and um, there are lots of interior options available. You can buy a car without air conditioning or with air conditioning. I personally didn't want air conditioning because I was gonna do the 2ZZ swap and this thing has a roof that comes off anyway. So it's one less thing for me to worry about. But. Yeah, there's no need for me to go into obscene levels of detail because no video can really cover that. You fall asleep before you got to the information you were looking for. So this is more just a general chit chat about how I found the car and uh, what I'd recommend if you're looking for one. So that's pretty much it. I think I'll leave it there because you can go off, if you're looking for an MR2, you can go off on the internet and you can find all the details you're looking for. But yeah, in a nutshell, Think they're really great cars if you can get one cheap enough and in decent condition that's been well looked after fantastic buy but just make sure you do your research that you check the car over as in as much detail as you can test drive it listen for any knocks rattles you know the kind of general stuff that you would do with any car and uh, yeah you shouldn't go too far wrong and if you're on the fence, um, if you're not quite sure whether or not to get an MR2 Roadster, if you're thinking uh, maybe 140 horsepower isn't a lot, don't worry about it. 140 horsepower in a car that weighs 900 and a bit kilograms is actually a really good power to weight ratio. I think that out on track, this car would embarrass a lot of much faster metal. And we'll find out because at the end of the month, I'm going to be taking this to Abingdon uh, Racing Circuit with the usual suspects, Paul, Ed, Ross, and um, we're going to see, finally, what the MR2 Roadster is like out on track. So, really excited about that. So, I hope you're going to join us for that. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe if you're not already doing so, and we'll catch you next time. Bye for now.